Hi all, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Amira, and if you are a returning viewer, a long time no see, it's been a minute. I had some technical difficulties, which I put on my community tab that my ring light had sort of conked out on me in the middle of filming last time I filmed. So I had to wait to get a new one. It was around Memorial Day weekend, so it took a little while, but we're here, we're back. And we are going to be doing a deep dive here. And when I say deep dive, I mean like, this is gonna be a long one because I've got a lot to talk about. Because we are going to talk about every product that I've tried in 2024 so far. Let's get into it. Know, maybe this sweatshirt was a bad idea because I'm hot now. But let me take a sip of my drink. All right guys, so we're gonna talk about every product I tried in 2024, which, I don't feel like I've bought a ton of makeup this year, and maybe that's just me being Delulu, but I didn't think I tried a lot of makeup um, <laughs> until I sat down to really list it, and then I was like, oh, okay. Now, I will say this. I haven't tried as nearly as much as some other um, beauty creators have tried. Um, that's for sure. I don't get as much PR. I don't buy as much in general. Um, so... I have to look at it that way. Like I am a content creator. I do purchase makeup for review. I do get some PR. So once I looked at it that way, I felt a little bit better about it, but but it, it, it was more than I thought it was gonna be. I'm not gonna lie to you. So what I've decided to do, so we're gonna break it down into categories just to make it easier, more palatable to speed things along. If there is anything that I mentioned here that I've done like a full review on, I'm not gonna go in depth about it. I'm just gonna sort of give a nice little recap and then hopefully I can remember to put like, you know, either a link to the actual full review video down below or in the description box, you know, in the description box or put a card up above. I don't know. We'll see how it goes though. How many of those I'll have to do. Hopefully not a lot. Um, so let's start off with complexion products and let's start off with the, the first product I tried in the new year as far as complexion products go, and it was actually the e.l.f. Camo Hydrating CC Cream. I have it in the shade Medium 33W Warm. The shade of this is a little... It's okay. It's not a perfect match. It's okay. The shade above and the shade below aren't good matches for me. So this is kind of the shade that I would have to, like, that I wear in this range. Um, I purchased this when I did a full face of e.l.f. products um, when they came out with a bunch of new things. Um, again, I will leave the review either down below in a card up above. Um, this I've only used a handful of times since that video, only because what I find with this is it ha does have quite a lot of coverage. It is a pretty, for a, for a CC cream, it, and it says it's a full coverage, long lasting, dewy finish. So this, if you're looking for something that's like dewy, but not full coverage, that's like medium coverage, this is not for you. This is like a foundation. This is a foundation. But what I did find with this is that I didn't find it as dewy as they claim it to be. And maybe that's just on my skin. I don't have super dry skin. Um, I have normal to oily and my skin is oily in the summer and pretty normal in the colder months. I just wasn't as wild by this as, you know, and it's not necessarily that I was expecting to be wild by it, but I was just expecting a little bit more from it as far as the, the, the description of it. It is long lasting. I will say that I think that is probably why, in my opinion, it's not as dewy as I was expecting it to be because it's very hard to make a dewy foundation that is long lasting. So I think they kind of sacrifice a little of the dewy factor for the long lasting factor, which is fine. I'm not a dewy, I'm not a dewy foundation girl. I tried this mostly for science and for review to see, you know, how this really worked on my skin type. And I was surprised at the fact that it is quite full coverage and quite actually sort of natural satin on me, not very dewy at all. And again, that could be because it was very cold when I tried it. And again, my skin is normal to oily, normal in the winter. I have a feeling this will probably be quite dewy on me. Now it's like warm outside and I made the mistake of wearing a sweatshirt. I don't, it's because I didn't want to get dressed today. So I just put a sweatshirt on and now I'm regretting my life choices, but yeah. So this for me, it's okay. I don't, I don't love it. I don't hate it. I don't know if it will survive like my next declutter type of foundation. You know what I mean? 
Next up, we're going to talk about the what I think was like the biggest foundation release of the year so far, and that is the About Face Beauty Performer Foundation. I own this foundation in three shades. I've only brought two over with me because I first bought it in this shade, which is MD1 Neutral, which is kind of warm, too warm for my for all of my face. Um, it actually works quite well on the parameter of my face because the parameter of my face is a little deeper than the, than the center. Um, and then I got M2 Neutral, which was good, but still not perfect. And then one day I was like, they had the foundation on sale at Ulta and I was just like, I'm going to try that olive one. I just want to see. I just want to know. And so I, got, I picked up M2 Olive. Now, this might look quite light, but this is what is all on the center of my face. And what I've been doing when I wear this foundation, first of all, I did a full review of that, so I will leave a card or, or a link in the description. Um, what I found with this foundation, I, first of all, I love it. I think it is a beautiful foundation. It is one, it is, I still reach for this foundation on a fairly regular basis. I kind of go back and forth between this foundation and another one um, I will mention in a moment. Um, but this was this blew me away, and I really love using this. And what I've been doing as of late since I got M2 Olive is that I've been putting this in the center of my face, and then I've been taking MD1 Neutral and putting it just around the parameter of my face, and that's been like a perfect match for me. So yeah, this foundation is fantastic. Um, I have three shades. I, the, the M2 Neutral I probably can get more use out of towards the winter time, but for now, like this is what's been working for me, and. I, I think this is a beautiful, this was, this was a, first of all, it was such a really well done shade range. It was so well done, but also like, because of the fact that it was so well done, the, the fact that I could pick up multiple shades and kind of get them to work for me, even if some aren't perfect matches, some of them, I can interchange them. That tells me that they really paid attention to like undertone and to shades. And I just think if this was a really really excellent release from About Face. But yes, this is um, one of my favorite foundations in my collection. Next up is probably the most recent foundation that I've added to my collection. And one that I've really enjoyed um, is the Urban Decay Face Bond. Um, what do they call this? They call this a serum. I think they call it a serum foundation. This is quite full coverage in my opinion. This is like a traditional foundation. It, they say it's a serum, but I think it's it's definitely a, a full face serum, a full coverage serum, excuse me. And I have the shade 21 medium neutral. I do think that I want to eventually purchase this in the shade down um, because I feel like this is just a tad too warm for me, but I love the finish of this foundation. It is a natural matte. It's not super matte 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 it's not dewy it's like that perfect like your skin texture it's so long lasting it i've worn this for nine hour work days and i've gone into the bathroom to take my makeup off at the end of the day and my makeup was still on point like my my the, like my foundation looked amazing so if you are looking for something and it's also quite lightweight i do want to say that even though this is this reads full coverage it is so lightweight it is so um easy to apply and to blend that I didn't feel like even though this was a full coverage foundation I didn't feel like I was wearing like foundation you know I didn't have that heavy feeling that you can often get with full coverage foundations which I will say I kind of got a little bit with the elf so yeah so this one I just think is a real was a really good release from Urban Decay and I, I've said it before and I'll say it again is I think Urban Decay's bag like they need to stay in their complexion product bag because that's where they shine and then next up is a foundation that I almost forgot to talk about because I haven't used this since I purchased it. I bought the Kosas BB Burst Tinted Gel Cream. I have it in the shade 32 Medium Deep Neutral Warm. <laughs> there are very few things in makeup that I just loathe. You know, like there'll be things that I'm like, you know, it didn't really work for me, but I can see, you know, how it'll work for someone else. I can see what they were going for. And then there's a product like this that I tried it and I tend to like to do most of the time. I do like to do, if I'm going to do a foundation review, I like to wear foundation a couple of days to a week before I sit down and film with it, just so that I have some cohesive thoughts and some well, um, 
you know, I have some 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 data behind what I'm gonna say to you guys about a foundation. I, I'm not just gonna say, oh, it looks pretty on the skin, and you know, and then weeks later yeah, I find out it's terrible. But I've just done that impression, you know. So I try not to do that. I sometimes it's hard to avoid that when you're doing, you know, new makeup and it's something that you're just doing the first impressions. But generally speaking, with foundations, I do like to use them a few, at least a few times before I sit down and give you my thoughts. I hated this gel, tinted gel cream so much, guys. I wore it, I wore it to work. I put it on my face as I was doing my makeup and I only had 45 minutes to get out the door and I was doing my makeup and as I was doing my makeup, this was getting darker and darker and darker on my skin and I was losing my mind because I didn't have time to change it. I didn't have time to fix it. I had to leave. I had to go. So I walked out the door wearing this BB Burst gel cream. And uh, by the time I got to work, I looked like an Oompa Loompa. And I was so mad. I literally took pictures of my face and I was just, the, the, you could see the rage in my eyes. I was so upset. And not only that, I hated the way it looked on my skin. Like apart from the oxidization, you know, a part of it oxidizing and turning me to Balumba, it was the way that it applied to my skin was terrible. I don't generally have issues with how foundations apply. Like for me, a foundation applies fairly well. Like I don't have a ton of texture. I am acne prone. Um, and I have some scarring, but I'm on tretinoin, so my skin texture is pretty under control. So I don't really have a lot of issues with application of foundations. Most of them will go on smoothly unless there's an issue with the formulation itself, which is the case with this. This just felt like it was like balling up on my skin. And at first I was like, well, maybe it's my, my sunscreen that it's fighting with. But this just, I had such a hard time blending this out. It, I didn't feel like it lasted on my on my skin. Like even though it was, I was an oompa loompa for the rest of the day. By the end of the day, it was like fading and patchy in chunks, and I was just like, I don't understand why we put this on the market. And the thing is, is that I've I've been a fan of Kosas for a while now. One of my old my old favorite foundations was their original foundation um and i was a huge fan their their concealer was my favorite concealer for a really long time i've repurchased it like three times um but i haven't reached for kosas foundation products and complexion products in a while because this is the second complexion product of theirs that has burnt me the other one was that that glowy sparkly mess that they had that you put on your face and it was just nothing but glitter that one and that was my least favorite product of 2023 and it's really wild to me that or at least least favorite complexion product and it's really wild to me that we're now in the next year and once again Kosas has 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 rode in on the the lame horse and I'm talking about how much I hate this product it's kind of turned me off from the brand I'm not gonna lie because this is the second product that I've tried from them that I've absolutely hated. And I don't talk about makeup like that because there's very few things that I absolutely hate. There's some things that I find are subpar. There's very few things that I hate. But I wore this once, all of once. I disliked it so much, guys, that I couldn't even do a review on it for you because I was like, I've only worn it once. I, all I would have to say, it would be a five minute video with me just going, no. So I figured what I was going to do is hold off, hold on to it and talk about it in my review roundup. And here we are. Here I am talking about it. And all I can say is this sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a terrible product. Next up I wanna talk about, and I probably should have talked about these first, but um, I wanna talk about the two primer products that I purchased in the last um, Sephora sale that I have tried. And one of these I've been reaching for a ton, and the other one I've only reached for twice because I just, I don't get it. Okay, so first up, let's let's go with the positive. So first up, let's talk about the Danessa Meyer Jimmy Skin Water Power Powder Serum. Now. This is a mattifying and priming face serum. I don't generally go for primers at all, and I don't generally go for for mattifying primers. I usually just apply my foundation over my sunscreen because my sunscreen works. It's a really good primer. Um, but I wanted to try this for the warmer months because I do tend to get oilier, like in these areas, and I wanted to see if there was something that could kind of combat that that would also allow me to wear some of my more 
luminous satiny foundations and I wouldn't have to rely on like a matte foundation, you know, because I don't really love the look of matte foundation in the summer. I want that sort of glowy summer vibe. So I wanted to see if I could have my cake and eat it too. So I got this and the first time I tried it, I was like, meh, it's okay. And I tried it with the About Face Beauty foundation and I wasn't a huge fan of the two together. Um, it just, I just didn't feel like they worked well together. And then I tried it with the, with the Salt New York Sneaky Mom Skin Tint. And I've tried the Sneaky Mom Skin Tint. I had it when it first released. I panned it. But when I was in New Orleans, Kiki, who is the owner of Salt New York and also a friend of mine, supplied us with, um, you know, some, some of the products. And I got, an, I ordered the same shade that I'd ordered previously that I panned. And then I was thinking, maybe I should try the shade, the, the, the shade down, like a slightly lighter shade. So I got in eight, in zero eight. And, um, she was kind enough to send it to me in PR and I tried it and it was perfect. And I was wearing that for a while, but as the temperature was going up, I was noticing that my skin was just getting a little too dewy with it because it is, it's not, a dewy product, but it's not a matte product. It will, your, your oils will, will come through and your shine will come through. And I'm fine with shine or like glow. I just don't want to feel shiny and greasy, you know? So I was like, well, let me try it with this Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Water Powder Serum. And y'all, that is such a winning combo for me. If you are someone who really likes the Sneaky Balm, but you find that it's a little too oily for you in the sun, in the warmer months, try it with this. Try it with this. It is a perfect combo. And I've been wearing the Sneaky Balm a ton, which is so wild to me because when I first purchased it, I used it only exclusively in the winter because I was afraid that it was going to be too dewy for my skin come the warmer months. And I was feeling that same way, but I'm, I was like, I'm loving wearing this. I love the look of it. It's just what I've been feeling and wanting in my life as far as complexion products go, where it's like, you know, you get a little coverage, but it's your skin, but better. And I liked the way my skin looked, but it was just, I was just afraid that I wasn't going to be able to continue to use it. And, but this combination has been amazing, amazing. So I've been loving this for that. Um, I've been using it basically exclusively with the Sneaky Balm and it's been working for me. So I say, if you have something that's like a little bit on the dewier side, try it with that. Some people think that About Face Beauty is dewy. I just think it's more of like a natural satin. It's just not matte. So if you, you get oily, it will get oily. If you're dry, it will stay pretty normal. That's kind of the way I've seen it because when I've worn it in the winter, my skin didn't have any issues with dewiness. But if as it's gotten warmer, yes, my skin can get a little glowy. And mostly with this, I just rely on powder. The other primer that I tried or over under under makeup product I tried was the Glow Recipe Watermelon Niacinamide Hue Drops in Sun Glow. Now, I was really excited for this because I love to have like a little bit of a bronzy vibe going on in the summer, like under my, my complexion products. I was like, yes, like I love the um, Armani Liquid Silk bronzing drops. Uh, I still have them. I think I'm gonna bust them out, because, but I was hoping that I could find something that I could put like all over my face. I don't use those all over my face because they are quite bronzy. I I tried this under foundation and maybe it was the foundation I tried it under but I just was not impressed and I think the issue with this is this is only one shade and it's not bad like when I put it on my skin I actually thought it was going to be too dark for me and you can see here like it's actually quite dark in tone like it's got quite a bit but the issue is this once you rub it in and I'm going to try and do this on my hand and I didn't bring a paper towel or anything to wipe it off but once you rub it in it actually kind of like like it gives you something, but as you can see, like my skin tone is there. So it comes off when you first pump it onto your hand or onto, you know, like your brush or sponge or whatever, it comes off quite dark, but this is it blended into my skin. There's not a whole lot of like, there's glow there, but it's not a lot. And what I found is that once I put foundation over it, the glow was completely gone. Like I didn't have, it wasn't strong enough to shine through any complexion product that I had on. And it's not like I wear super full coverage all the time. I don't, I tend to, be more like light to medium most days. And so for me, the fact that it couldn't even pull through my lighter coverage foundations, I I just didn't see the point. Now, I think this might be nice if you are um, not wearing any makeup, like any foundation, um, and you just want to put this like on over your sunscreen or something, and you just want your skin to have a little glow. If you just want to wear this on its own, 
I guess, again, I feel like I get a little something, but I just don't know if it's enough for me to be excited about it. Like, you know what? You see what I mean? Like, I have this glow, but honestly, guys, I can get that glow with sunscreen. Like, my sunscreens are glowy. Not like not uh, in a, a bronzy kind of way or in a shimmery way, but uh, they give my skin like this really moisturized plump dewy look. So if I'm going for that on the weekend, which I usually do, I don't wear a lot of makeup, you know, on days I'm not working or filming, I can just put my sunscreen on and I get the same thing. So for me, it's just kind of like, what, what, do you, what do you do? Now, I will say if you are of a lighter complexion than me, this might give you exactly what you need. I just feel like for me, once this is rubbed in, it's too close to my skin tone for it to have any effect. And then let, I have two complexion products left to talk about. Both of them are under eye products, concealers, correctors. So like I said, Kiki gave us um, some of the of some of her products from Salt New York um, at Creators and Friends. And one of them was the Best Case Concealer, which was the newest product that they released. And I liked it, but I was like, I felt like the shade wasn't quite right. And so when I got home, um, she was kind of to send me the other shades and so this is this is n7 so this is this this is the sneaky bomb in n7 and the best case concealer in seven and then this is the concealer in eight and the sneaky bomb in in number eight and this is what i've been using you can actually see the dent i've made in that so you guys know if you follow me on instagram i hope you do um i i don't post a ton of makeup on instagram i post some i'm more of a i post my life and what I'm thinking and what, you know, my opinions on things. Instagram is a bit free, more free flowing than my YouTube channel, but I do, I do talk about makeup and I talked about how my favorite concealer, which was my Givenchy Prism Libre concealer had all of a sudden gone bad. I had taken it with me to New Orleans. It was fine. I got home. When I got home, I got sick. So I wasn't doing any makeup for a little while. And then when I went to reach for it, it was like separated and it was just like watery at the, it was just gross. And I was just like, house, house way, how? And, you know, um, I posted on, posted on Instagram and hot miss Tom DM me and was like, yeah, I've heard that that can go bad after about six months. And I was like, great, which I mean, it's makeup, but I just feel like for the price for Givenchy, I should not have to be worried about my concealer going bad in six months. And I don't even know if I had that for six months. It might have been exactly six months, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. So I was a little bummed. And I was at that point like, well, what am I going to do? Like I had other concealers. I have a million concealers, but I tend to be one of those people who once I find a concealer that I like, I just will use it until it's finished. And then I'll go into my other concealers. And so I was just like, what am I going to do? And then... The best case concealer came into my life and that is exclusively what I've been wearing since I got it guys. I'm wearing it now under my eyes and I get so many compliments on how like on my skin, my under eyes and the combos that work for me are of course the sneaky balm with the best case concealer and I will say the best case concealer is more emollient and you can actually see it here. I'm going to open this up so you can see. You can see how emollient and shiny the best case concealer is as opposed to the Sneaky Balm. Sneaky Balm has still got some emolliency and some shine to it, but it's not as much, you know? Um, it's also a little warm in here, so that's another reason why it's probably looking like that. But yeah, you don't, it's not as much. You're not gonna get as much of that, like, emolliency that you can see here, like that really dewy, glossy vibe. So I love wearing it with the Sneaky Balm, but I also love wearing it with the Embal Face, which is what, how I'm wearing it today. And I don't generally set under my eyes. What I will do is set around the parameter since this is more on the dewier side. I set around the parameter, but I don't like setting under my eyes. I never like setting under my eyes. So I'll just set around the parameter. And I can't tell you how many times people compliment me on my skin when I'm wearing this concealer, either when I'm wearing it with the Sneaky Balm or when I'm wearing it with this. It's really funny because Kiki, I posted a thumbnail of a video uh, not too long ago. And Kiki... DM'd me. It was like, your skin looks amazing. What are you wearing? And I was like, your concealer. <sighs> yeah, girl. It's amazing. And it is. It's absolutely fantastic. So that is what I've been been what I've been reaching for the most. The other item that I got is the um, Sigma Spectrum Color Correcting Duo in Medium to Dark. Now, when I originally got this in New Orleans because Sigma was one of the sponsors of our trip. And they gave us some some amazing products. I'm gonna talk about other ones that I've tried since then in this little in this video. But 
they had given me the wrong complexion products as far as the powder and the color corrector. They, they were just a little too deep. So I went ahead and purchased the ones that worked for me when I got home because I really wanted to try them. And I was like, I'm going to purchase the ones that work for me. So I purchased the color corrector and the powder, which I need to grab because that's another thing I need to talk about. I'm telling you guys, every time I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a lot. So I'm going to grab the powder in a minute, but let's talk about this color corrector. So I like the texture of this. I like the way it applies under the eyes. I think it's beautiful. I just, I kind of think they need another shade because there's a big jump between medium to, medium to dark to dark to deep because this is quite, and you can see like it's quite light, but the deep is quite deep. So there's like space for one right and another duo right here. But I have been able to use this and I really, I tend to reach for this shade specifically because it's perfect for me. And if I'm going for like a fuller beat, and I've used this on its own too, and I'm looking for something that, can, it does give coverage, first of all. It, it does work like a concealer, so you will get coverage. Um, but I also just like it, um, I mean, if I'm going for more a fuller beat and I just want a little bit more to help with darkness under the eyes. I don't generally deal with darkness under the eyes, but there have been, this past couple of months, I've been dealing with some because of like poor sleep, you know, and things like that. So um, when I'm having, dealing with a little bit more darkness, then I'll dip into this shade here. But I do think it is a beautiful formula. The formula is very, very well done. Next up, let's talk about the Sigma uh, Soft Focus Setting Powder because this is the powder that I have been reaching for. You guys know I love my Givenchy and I have pulled my Givenchy back out. I hadn't been using it because I've been reaching for this one. I did pull it out recently. I still love it. It still holds such a, it still has my heart. But I will say that I've been really enjoying the Sigma Soft Focus Setting Powder. I have it in the shade Honey. Um, so the shade looks like that. And the way that I've been applying it, I apply it with a powder puff, but on when I'm using um, like a more dewy product, when I'm maybe like the Sneaky Balm, and then I'll just kind of go in in like pointed areas and apply. And I still do that, but I do it with this brush here. And this is a Sigma Precision Powder, and this is their, their newest brush collection that we were able to receive in New Orleans. And I've been using these brushes almost exclusively since we got them. They've really rocked my world. I'm not really going to review tools. I don't really want to talk about tools, but I might include these in another video that I'm going to do later on. Um, but I am obsessed with this brush specifically and then dipping into this powder. And what I've been doing is just going into the top and just applying like focused areas that I like to get because it, this powder is super soft. It does offer some coverage though, I will say that. So this is not like a translucent powder. So I just like to go in like this in areas that I want to make sure that I'm powdering and keeping the shine down. And this, is, this has been like my go-to routine since I got this powder and since I got this brush. And I've just been really enjoying it. And it gives me like enough um, set where I need it, but without dulling my skin, which is fantastic. And then let's talk about uh, bronzer because I have two here that I want to talk to you guys about. And one of them is was a bust for me and I kind of knew that it could go one of two ways. So this is really just more a miscalculation on my part. So first up is the Glossier Cloud Paint Seamless Cheek Color in Swept. Um, I bought this because I was like, well, I've really been into like, I like neutral bronzers or, and I've been really trying to get away from all of these orangey toned bronzers and it's been hard. And so I found this one. This one is lighter than really, -ish, than, I'm like, once I blend this out, first of all, it looks really good on my skin. It does actually look nice. But once I blend it out, it kind of disappears a bit. And it's not, it just doesn't give as much coverage work as far as what I'm looking for for a bronzer. But I feel like I could probably make this work as a blush because it's so pretty. But for as a bronzer, it's kind of been a fail for me. Um, the other shade, the deeper shade, is just a little too warm for my taste and for my skin tone. So I knew that this was a bit of a gamble to to purchase it with the purpose of using it as a bronzer. It's meant to, I mean, it is, I mean, it is a bronzer. They market it as a bronzer, but it is also a cloud pink. It's also considered a cheek color. So you can use this as a, a blush if you want to, because it's the same formulation as their cloud paints. But as you can see, like as I'm blending this out and once I've put other makeup on, I think this would work great on its own, but it, it's just a little too, a little too neutral, a little too light 
for a bronzer for me. But a bronzer that has rocked my world, and I was shocked, is the NYX Buttermilk Bronzer. And this is the shade Butter Biscuit. Now I have two of the shades. I have Butter Biscuit and a shade that's slightly the next shade up. That one is a little too rich for my skin because just as I feel like that one's a little too sheer, the Glossier, this is so pigmented, you guys. It is so pigmented and it is so easy to blend. I will say this, okay. It's easy to blend if you have the right brush and you have the right tools and you don't go in too heavy. There is a learning curve with this because the first time I used it, I didn't like it at all. And I have friends on Instagram who are like, I don't like this product. I don't know how to make it work for me. I, I can't get it to blend properly. It's, it's too pigmented. And I used a dual fiber brush. And I also use, I used the, one of the brushes from the Sigma collection that work. That's my go-to brush when I'm using this. I am wearing this now. And as you see, it's not that intense because that brush picks it up so well and it blends it so well. But what I love about this, guys, is that it is so buttery, smooth, and it is a rosy bronzer. I am obsessed with rosy bronzers. It started with Phytosurgeons and their rosy bronzer. And I, I just feel like rosy bronzer is the future. I believe rosy bronzer is our future. I do. I just, it, it's just been perfect for me. And it's kind of been all I've reaching, been reaching for. And I've kind of abandoned my other bronzers to tell you the truth. And I'm really interested in trying that new Lancome one because it's rosy and I'm just like, yes, please. Um, but yeah, this is my, this has been my favorite bronzer that I've tried in a really long time. And it's from the drugstore and it's only $10. I'm just saying. All right, so now let's move into blush. So blush. I have four blushes here. And let's start off with one that I received in PR. And this is from Floresis. And this is their Morning Rays. This is their Peony Dream, Peony Dream Cream Blush. I reviewed this on my channel. Really beautiful, beautiful formula. I wasn't sure I was actually going to like this. I didn't even know if I liked the shade. And I actually think it's really beautiful. I haven't reached for it a ton because there's another brush blush that I'm gonna talk about that is a similar tone that I've been reaching for more. I do wanna reach for this more, but I of the little bit that I've tried of it, it is a decent, it is a it is a decent blush. It's it 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 has that like powderiness that you can pick it up well, but when it applies to the cheeks, it melts into that in that way, in a way that like that cream to powder formula that's so lovely that kind of just gives a really soft satin glow to the skin it's very blurry it does all of that so i if you were interested in trying any fluorescence brushes blushes i keep saying brushes this is a good one to try then we have the reformulation and re-release of the house labs color fuse blush and i have the shade fire moon this is a blush that i did not like the first time i tried it and i was so devastated i was like i don't know if i like it i don't know and it was the brush that i was using with it again i reached for the blush brush that's from the Sigma collection and I've, that's only the thing that I've that's the only brush I've been using this with. I find with natural hair brushes it picks too much of the product up because this is actually quite quite pigmented and I found that I was having a hard time blending it out which is why I was having I wasn't enjoying it because I was like it was like applying all this product and I was just like oh my god but if you find again this is it's similar to the NYX um bronzer once you find a brush that really works for you this is beautiful like my my opinion of it did a complete 160 i or 180 i just i went from like i don't think i like this to this and another blush of the two blushes that i've been just reaching for exclusively like i've been just bouncing back and forth between these two All right. next up is a blush that came out um at the beginning of the year and i reviewed it when i did my elf new makeup review along with the CC cream and that is the camo liquid blush and this is the shade dusty rose now these are dupes of the rare beauty blushes and let me just say one thing they did a really good job of duping is how freaking pigmented these are and how much a little goes a long way much like the rare beauty blushes because don't play around with this. Don't put a lot on your face. Do, 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 and then blend gently because it's very much like the Rare Beauty. You know how the Rare Beauty, you only need a little. It will last you forever. 
this is very similar. Beautiful shades. This shade, um, Dusty Rose, is kind of... Um, I haven't seen if there's a specific dupe shade. It probably is to Rare Beauty, but I, I, I tried it with one of the pinkier ones that I own, which is, I think it's called Pinch. I know the, the blush is called Soft Pinch, but I think the shade I have is called Pinch, but I could be wrong. Um, and that one is a little bit deeper than this. It's, this one's a little bit lighter and it looks like it would be too light for me, but no, no, no. No, no, no. This is so pigmented. This blends beautifully. It's, it's, I have no problems with it showing up on my skin tone. Um, beautiful shade. Um, formula is just like the Rare Beauty. So if you've ever used the Rare Beauty, you approach with caution. You approach it the same way. If you've never used the Rare Beauty, please heed my advice. Two small dots. You can blend with your fingers or a brush or even a sponge. You can actually use any of those applications. All three work. It's really just about making sure you don't put too much on your face. And then finally, I have this Sigma blush. Um, this is Cor de Rosa. And I received this in PR in um, New Orleans. And when I first opened it up, I was like, oh, that's pretty, but it's not really my kind of shade. You know, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't really do like pink, pink, pink. Okay. Remember I said there was a blush that I've been reaching for along with Fire Moon, and I've just been bouncing between the two? These are the two. <laughs> These are the two. <laughs> This is a beautiful formula and I don't, I'm wearing Cor de Rosa today. It's just really pretty. It's like a really pretty like pink that everyone, it's a very, it's one of those pinks that's like a perfect neutral pink. So a lot of skin tones can wear it. It's beautiful. It applies beautifully. I just, yeah, I just, I didn't think I was going to like this. And this is, I'll show you a, a comparison of this one and the Floracis one so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. They're not that different. This one's a little bit deeper but not by much but this one has just got it's got a little if you can tell it's got a little bit more like coral in it and I love a coral blush so I I think that's one of the reasons why I've been drawn to this is like it's like pink with a hint of coral which I've been really enjoying. All right guys now let's move on to eyes. I've got a lot way more than I realized. So we're going to start with the single shadows and the little thingies, okay? So first up, we're going to start with these bad boys that I picked up and I was perfectly, I was planning to do a, a review of these and a couple of other Rabanne products and I just never got around to it and the products have been out for a while. So if you guys still want to see that, let me know. Put it, put, put, let me know in the comments below if you still want to see a review of the Rabanne makeup products. But I just felt like they weren't relevant anymore, but I did pick up two and I did pick up two shades that I knew I was going to like, that I was going to want to wear after the video. I didn't pick up shades that I was just like, I'm never going to wear these. So I picked up the shade, um, my bad and the shade would you. So these are the color shot cream to paint matte liquid eyeshadows. These are beautiful. The formulation is beautiful. They layer over each other. Well, I did a look last weekend where I just used these two and a brown eye pencil, my, my go-to eye pencil, um, which is Mac Teddy, by the way. Um, and some mascara and my eyes looked so pretty. This is of course the deeper tone. So I went over my lid with this shade and I'll show you on my hand. I've got so much makeup on my hand. I'm going to have to wash my hands in a minute. Um, so this is Would You, and this goes on quite light on me. Uh, someone deeper or lighter than me, it, it reads as like a rosy pink on me. The, the neutral tone comes out a little bit more, um, and it's lighter, but I'll show you guys what both of these look like on my hand. But the formula is so nice. Again, you only need a little. A little bit goes a long way because these blend so nicely on the eye. So that's Would You and My Bad. And as you can see, which was quite light, but it does have that pink tone. But when I blend this all over my lid, it's quite pretty. And then I put this on my outer corner and then I blended it into my crease to just give a little bit of smokiness. And it was chef's kiss, beautiful. So if you are wondering about these, I haven't tried the metallic ones yet. I, you know, um, again, if I decide to wind up doing a video, then I'll probably pick up one or two of those for you guys to, you know, to review for you. But these I've really liked. Um, they kind of remind me of the Too Faced Melted Chocolate Matte Liquid eyeshadows that I absolutely love and I still own two and I'm and I'm getting to the end of them and I'm getting really sad because those are discontinued and they're really hard to find and I'm the make the the About Face Beauty ones are nice the 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 I only prefer the neutral tones though I I don't really love the About Face Beauty ones that are the brighter colors I think the neutral tones are just a better formulation um they're not as watery or liquidy or watery and sheer the, the the brighter colors from about face beauty they're they're liquid shadows the bright colors are quite sheer whereas 
the tones that are more on the neutral and natural tone side are not. And these kind of give me those vibes. And these are the types of tones that I like to wear when I'm wearing like liquid shadows. So I've been enjoying these. And then next up, I have two of the um, shades from Vital Surgeons that they released this year. And I have Ancient Acres and Hypnotic Honey. I recently purchased um, another shade from them, um, Starlight Symphony, um, from the collection before this one. Um, and I was going to place another order. I was going to get more, but they, they, so they had recently had a sale and people lose their minds when phytosurgeons has a sale. And I got there clearly too late. Practically everything was sold out. And so I just got like the few things that I wanted that were on my list that I could get my hands on. I do plan on trying more, but let's talk about these two here. So this is Ancient Acres. Looks like this. How pretty is that? And this is Hypnotic Honey. And guys, I have been reaching for these a ton. Like I've said before, my makeup routine for my day-to-day -day life has changed so much because I just don't have as much time as I used to to spend on doing my makeup. And I've just been really liking the vibe of having really great complexion and like, a you know, a glowy skin and a soft, pretty eye with a little liner. And sometimes I'll do like a pop of color here with, you know, mascara something like that i haven't been doing like full face full makeup like this this eye look um by the way um <laughs> is inspired by olivia l factory she did a look like this recently and i was just like that's pretty and so yeah i really only get a chance to really sit down and play with my makeup when i sit down to film for you guys so that's when i tend to do more like exciting things you know and it gets me back to you know the time when I had time to do those things and have fun with color and eye makeup but during the day I, I just don't have the time like when I do I do I try to do something fun and special but most of the time I don't so I'm always looking for single shadows that will give me like a really beautiful glow and my thing that I love about these is that you can apply these with your fingers you can apply them with the brush and if you, you can get, you can build up and get sort of like that satiny vibe. And then the more you, you, you blend it out or tap with your finger, you can get more of the sparkle and you can get a really beautiful sparkly look. One of my favorite things to do is to take my Too Faced um, liquid shadows that are both like a neutral tone and apply that all over my lid, you know, a little past the crease and blend it, you know, blend the edges. And then I'll go in with one of these or both. I like these actually layer really beautifully because they're quite close in tone, but not quite. Like they're almost close, but not quite. They're, and I'll show you here. You see like one is a little bit more warm than the other. And the textures of them, once you put them on the eye are different so you kind of get a little bit of more glow from one than you do from the other and they just layer beautifully and I've just been adoring these so much the other single shadow that I've been reaching for a ton and I actually took this with me to New Orleans is the Make Beauty Multichromatic Metal Reflecting Eyeshadows. Now, they call these multichromatic. There's nothing multichrome about them. I'm just going to let you know that. I think that's just the name and they're trying to they were trying to be fancy. But they are not multichromatic, okay? And I've gotten I've gotten liner. <laughs> Eyeliner on that one. But they are beautiful. I have two, and I'm probably going to wind up picking another one up. But this is the one that I've gotten the most use out of. So I'm going to talk about this one. And this is, like I said, this is Dream Dust. And it looks like that. Look at that. You see that golden glow right there? This has been a lifesaver when I really want to do an, an, like a like I want to do an eye look but I still don't have a lot of time to do an eye look I'll go in with this because the great thing about this is because it has this beautiful texture to it you can see it here it's kind of got this like speckled speckled texture you can go in with a brush and apply it and it you know you can diffuse it and then you can go in with your finger and tap over that and you get this much more like intense um, texture and color and sh and shimmer and then I will take my Mac Teddy pencil and I'll put it in the outer corners and I'll just buff that into the outer corner just to give it a little bit of smoke and a little bit of definition on my outer corner and some mascara and I'm done and you would have thought I put a ton of, of time into that look but it takes me five minutes tops it is a beautiful product I want more of these yes please I per probably will be purchasing more of these I just think they're stunning um, again don't let the title fool you they're not multi-chromes 
they're multi-chromatic. And I think that's their fancy way of trying to say that they have texture to them. They have, you know, this sort of like beautiful, you know, glow. Fine. But if that's what you're looking for, multi-chrome is not what you're going to find with this product, but it's still a beautiful product. We're going to finally get into the palettes. And we're going to start with this tiny little baby palette that I have here that I got in Say it with me, New Orleans. So I got this, Surat Beauty was lovely and they sponsored a, a brunch that we had and they came and talked to us about their products. And I have some products that I haven't reached for yet. That's why I'm not gonna review them because I haven't used them. So I, or I've only tried it on like for a second and I don't really know enough about the product to really give you guys a full review. So I'm not gonna talk about those products yet. Um, we got a lot of makeup in New Orleans and I'm still working my way through and I'm still deciding on what I like. I also have things that I know I'm not gonna use, so I've put them to the side for a giveaway. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do a giveaway at some point. So I wanna make sure that I have things to the side for you guys um, that I'm, I know I'm not gonna use. But that's not what we're gonna here to talk about. So first up, let's talk about this Syrah Beauty. This is the Beyond Beige Quad. And it looks like this. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying, this product is very beautiful. This, the, the formulation is beautiful. The colors are light. Light. I can't even get... This one kind of shows up on my skin. It actually does. Like when I build it up, it does. But it... Hold on. I put that on the wrong finger. I had shimmer on my hand. That was not the right finger. All right. Actually, let's use... I do have a, I do have a right hand. Let's try that hand. That might help a little bit better. But I'm going to show you guys how this shows up on my hand, and then you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. So this is that light beige shade here. Right there. But this is the thing. When I first tried this, I was like, this is so light, and this is really only going to show up on fair, you know, lighter complexion people, lighter skin tone people. Um, and that's true. So... But there are ways that I've been able to use this that I've really enjoyed. And so I wanted to talk about that um, because I have used this and I own it and I wanna give you my, I wanna give you my thoughts. So this shade here is pretty as a base. It's not gonna do a whole lot as you can see. And then what I like to do is actually go into this shade called Quiver, 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 Quiver like Quiver, this one here. And this is stunning because it is a satin, with some shimmer. This one here. And I will blend this all over my lid. And then I will take this shade here and I'll go along my lash line um, and maybe do a tiny baby wing. Maybe, sometimes I don't. And then I'll put this one in my inner corner and that's the look. So I can get, I can use this, but I will say that this is not a universal palette. This is a palette that is for lighter skin tone people and I'm just light enough that I can get away with it but if you are deeper than me you're not going to get a whole lot of this. I also will say that this is very much that formula that you find with luxury eyeshadows where the shadows are quite soft and silky. There's not a lot of pigment on first application. You can build them up but you if you're looking for that super immediate impact with this, you're not going to get it but I do think the formula is nice and I do think if you are my skin tone or lighter I if you're my skin tone, I don't know if I would necessarily say go out and spend the, the money on this because it's expensive and you can probably achieve this with something else that's less expensive that you can get more payoff from. So I will say if you are lighter than me, this may be worth it for you because I think you might be able to get some real, really good um, looks out of it. I enjoy it. I'm, I'm not mad to have it. I don't dislike it. The formula is beautiful. Very elegant. Very luxury. Um, but I do think it is quite a limited palette as far as to who can use it. Uh, I have this palette that I received in PR from Florisis and it is from their, um, Into the Wild. This, the name of the palette is Into the Wilds. Um, and I think that's the name of the collection, but I could be wrong. So this is what it looks like. Beautiful palette. This suffers from the same issue that this one does, except it does have color, but this is quite... I have to wait for the ambulance to fly by, but this is quite soft in co in color payoff, and 
like I mentioned in my review, and I, again, if I can remember, I'll put, I, you can only put so many cards. So I, I, I say I'm going to put cards. I'm going to put cards for what I can put cards for. Um, but this is very reminiscent of Korean beauty in the sense that the color, even though there's color in this palette, everything's about a wash of color. You know, it's, you're not going to get these super intense, deep, like orange, blue, green, yellow. It's not going to give, it's going to give you a wash of color. And that's really kind of the point of it. So even though I do think this is not necessarily friendly to someone who is my skin tone, who's deeper than me, I was able to get really a really pretty look out of this. But if you are looking, if you need color payoff, which you do when you are of a deeper skin tone, you need something that can really, you know, show up against your, your, you know, your melanin. This is not going to be the one for you. But if you are a, a lighter skin tone and you want something that applies color softly, or if you're really, you don't want that huge impact of like orange on your eye and then you're fighting to blend it out, I think this is a really nice palette for that. Um, and I enjoyed the look that I came up with when I used this, but I will say I haven't reached for it since because if I'm wanting these colors, I tend to reach for palettes that can give me more payoff. That's just my preference. All right, next up, let's talk about all of the No Matte Cosmetics palettes I've tried over this past six months, and I didn't realize I tried this many, and I didn't realize that No Matte had released so much in six months already. They've released so much. Oh my goodness, No Matte. So the first one, and I've received all of these in PR, and this the first one is the New Zealand Stargazing Palette, and I did do, um, I believe I did either one or two looks with this palette on my channel. I did a video dedicated to it. This is a beautiful palette. I'll show you what it looks like, of course. So it looks like this. Beautiful, beautiful. I will say this is not my my color scheme. This is not my color story, my preferred color story. But I will say that it's funny that I said that because when I first got this, I tried it out for the video and then I was like, I don't know if I'm going to really reach for that that much. And then I proceeded to reach for it for like a good two to three weeks straight <laughs> so don't listen to me i'm like that's not really my color story and then i because these shades are so pretty and my the ones that i was reaching for weren't the mattes these metallics y'all these metallics are so nice and what i found myself being able to do were these really soft looks with these high impact metallics um, so I would go in with like this tone or one of these tones and then I'd reach for these metallics to complete the look and it was so pretty, like soft but still impactful and interesting and I got compliments every time I wore it. So this one was a, was a yes for me. It was a surprise yes for me. I was like, oh, I didn't, it's not really my bag, but I'm wearing it every day. Um, so yes, and Nomad has a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, matte formula. And their shimmers have been hit or miss for me. But what I will say about these is these are very different from the ones that I've tried in the past. They're quite um, flaky and high impact, um, not hard pressed. Um, they kind of have that, they're dual chromey. So they have that sort of like that wet factor that dual chromes and multi-chromes can sometimes have. Um, so you get really good payoff with these. And you can kind of see the shift here, kind of, sort of. I don't know if you can see it that well, but you can kind of see the shift. They're beautiful, shifty, dual chrome shadows that are gorgeous. And then next up, we had the Ireland Wild Atlantic Way. And it looks like this. And this is like in keeping with some of the other packaging, kind of like Okavango has this fabric to it. It's really pretty. I love these like velvety textures. They're really hard to keep clean, but I do love them. They're just so aesthetically and texturally pleasing. And this one was a green palette. And you guys know I love green. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But I did say, and I, I, I do say, I do stand by this. Is that I, as much as I love green, I don't wear green shadow as much as you would think for someone who loves green. I tend to like greens and like my decor and my clothing, but I don't wear a lot of greens in my everyday life. So I will say that surprisingly, you would think this one would be the one that I reach for the most. But I think I've reached for New Zealand stargazing more than I've reached for Wild Atlantic Way. Now, having said that. 
there are shades in here that I absolutely love, like um, Savage Beauty and Cliffs of Mohair. There are there are stunning shades in here, and you can do a neutral look with this. Like there, no one is really smart in that they always give you options when it comes to neutral tones to pair with their really colorful shadows, which I thank them for because I like to combine neutrals and colors. I don't want to necessarily always do just like one, like just a colorful look. I want to kind of like combine the two. So you absolutely can do that with this palette. The formulation is fabulous. Um, these do have like those those really pretty like textural metallics that they're that they've been doing recently that I like. Um, and I will say that like this um, Schlante shade, this one here, so nice, really pretty palette. We have these three palettes that they came out with recently, and I think of the three releases that they've done this year. This is my favorite because I love that you have options. You get three palettes. You can buy the set. You can buy them individually, I believe, or you could buy the set. I would say buy the set, guys. I would say because they're so great to travel with. They're so small and you can mix and match. And I, I've been doing looks where I add, um, where I do use this and then I use this. And then I've just been doing Oslo on its own because Oslo doesn't really need any help because it's beautiful and cold song and yummy scrumptious. Look how pretty that is. I love it so much. Okay. <laughs> and I did do a full review of these. So again, I'm not going to talk too much about them, but I will say that I, I stand by what I said. These two are my faves. And I actually have been reaching for this one more than this one, which is surprising because you guys know how much I love cool tones and you know how much I was talking about how much I love this palette, which I do. But I've been reaching for this one more, which is wild wild. All right, next let's talk about Sigma. And so I have two Sigma palettes, both of which I received in PR. So the first one I received to my home and it is the Sigma Ambience palette. Um, and it is a little mini that looks like this. Very pretty. Um, I've used this a handful of times and I do enjoy it. I will say this. I wish that there was one, this this Daily Lee shade was maybe a tad more neutral or a tad lighter. We have this shade here, Days, but this is too light for me for my crease. And this one often, this shade is so pigmented. Daylily is so pigmented that it's quite deep on my eye once I blend it out. So I'm always searching for something that I can pair with Daylily to kind of soften it a little bit for the crease. But outside of that, this is a, just, this is just like, you know, I mean, this is a neutral palette with some some great metallics you know those palettes that aren't like groundbreaking but you find yourself reaching for a lot and that's something that um when I first got this I was reaching for it a ton and then I got the Abu Dhabi one from um Nomad and I've been reaching for that one and I kind of get this I can get the same kind of vibe the only difference here is that this has some great um golds in it and it has this really pretty like taupey metallic called candlelight that that does not have. So it has, it has things going for it. And then of course, my baby, my love, the Sigma Cool Neutrals palette. I did a video on this. Lots of people did a video on this. Pr pretty much all of us who got the palette in New Orleans did a video on this palette because I have yet to hear anybody talk crap about this palette. It is a beautiful palette. It is a beautiful formula. Like I liked ambiance and I but I hadn't used it enough to really like form like a set set opinion of how I feel about the Sigma um, formulation, you know, and using the Cool Neutrals palette. I have used this palette so much. Like when we got this, I used it the next day the next evening for our for our final event, I used this. I took it with me when I went, I went from straight from NOLA to Philly. I used it while I was in Philly. I used it. I was sick, but then when I went to work, on the days I went to work, I was wearing this. I wore it for the rest. Of, I, I, I mean, this is the palette that I've used the most since I've gotten it. Yeah, a lot of these palettes are newer to me and to my collection, and this is one of them, but this is the most used of. Oh, I just dug into my shadow. Can I smush that? I just dug into my shadow. I'm very sad, but this this palette is so it's so versatile. Like it's kind of crazy because it doesn't it, it looks really basic, you know. It looks like oh, it's got some cool tones, it's got some warm tones and blah blah blah, but guys, I've seen looks done with this that I'm like, "Oh, I didn't even think of that." Oh, you used that shade? Wow. And then I've done looks where I'm like, "Okay, girl." 
girl okay you can do a smoky eye with green or blue or you can do this really cool tone metal look you can do a warm neutral because it's called cool neutrals but it's really kind of a dark horse in that way it's not really a cool neutral palette i think it's a really just a well a well laid out neutrals palette because there are definite warm tones in here that you can pull and i think it was really smart of simone and the team to come up with a neutrals palette that has just enough warmth that you can pull it back if you need to you know if you're someone who's afraid of cool tones you really you're curious but you're afraid of them this is a great palette because there's really you can always pull it back you can always pull it back you know or you can go just go warm you can just go warm i've done fully warm looks with this palette i've done fully cool looks with this palette it's 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 so far i will say of the palettes that i've tried this year that's probably my favorite up i have two palettes that i got from um fantasy cosmetica and pr one i got in nola nola and the other was sent to me and i did a review on recently and that is the fantasy cosmetica cradled in ice so this is the newer palette looks like these it is so pretty and it's kind of similar to me of the nomad in the sense that these tones usually aren't my jam but i've been obsessed with the shade hideaway adore hatchling and then adding like snuggle or embrace I've been using those and I've been loving every look I've done with this palette it's really pretty again it's not a color story that I generally tend to go for but I do like trying color stories that will catch my fan you know that will like kind of push me out of my comfort zone a little bit and this one has because I, I again I don't wear a lot of color in my eyes on a day-to-day -day basis so I tend to like to try and do something fun with color when I have a chance um, Druid I've had my eye on this palette for ages the other palette that i really want to get from them is fighter i really want fighter it's so pretty um i might pick that up at some point i'm trying not to buy a whole lot of makeup in general but especially eyeshadow palettes because i do have all of these that i'm still like using and enjoying and i decluttered a ton of makeup you know on my declutter in february and so i'm just approaching makeup in a different way now um and but there's still shadow there's still palettes that i want maybe i'll do a video about that about all the palettes that are on my wish list if you guys want to see that let me know because i have a lot um, but this is the Drew palette. This is what it looks like. Um, I used this palette as soon as I got it. Like I got into New Orleans and it was sitting on, it was sitting in my little goodie bag and I was like, oh, hello, lover. And I immediately went in with Root and Bare Form and I was like, yes, yeah, so this is Root and Bare Form. I just used these and I had already had makeup on my eyes. So I just put this over for our um, first first dinner there and my eye makeup was so pretty and I was like okay this is blending beautifully over makeup that I've had on for hours the fact that it can do that is great I can't wait to try this on its own which I have and this is like this is my happy like if I'm gonna do warm this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do grungy yellowy fugly but gorgeous colors like this like this is my happy if I'm gonna do warm this is how I'm gonna do it okay okay look at this and it's like sage i haven't used sage yet because i'm just like haven't been doing like colorful but now i just want to put sage all over my oh with bare form and mm, it's so pretty this palette is so sunny and i was so excited to get it because like i said i've had my eye on it and but i was even more excited because i really enjoyed the formula and yeah so i if you if you've had your eye on fantasy cosmetica and you've had your eye on this palette i highly recommend it is a stunning palette. And another indie palette that I picked up at the beginning of the year and that I used in like <laughs> I used and abused this palette and it is the Inslee Rain Cold Moon palette. She looks like this which I've seen I'm sure you've seen this palette so many times and she's just she's cool tone but she's like pinky purpley mommy and she's just so pretty. <sighs> Guys look at her I I think I think this is going to be in the battle, the final boss battle with the Sigma Cool Neutrals for my favorite palette of the year. You know, maybe something else will come out that'll blow both out of the water. I don't know. But as of now, it's between those two. Okay. Okay. Because this, this is my first time trying in Z Rain. I do find the, I do find the palettes really expensive. So I have to really like, I'm like, when I buy one, I'm like, okay. But there's like two or three more that I want because they're so beautiful and yeah. But this is, I've, I've used and abused this palette. When I got it, I, I, I wore it for a month straight. I wasn't wearing anything else, literally. Literally. 
didn't wear anything else with this palette. It is so beautiful. I will say I do wish that it had, and this is, this is the old lady in me going like, I wish it had, I mean like, don't listen to me I guess guys, but I wish it did, I did wish it had, I wish it had more, a, a few more traditional metallics because the flaky ones are really beautiful, but they, they are a lot, like they're very high impact. So if I'm going for something a little softer, oftentimes I would dip out of this palette and just pull something from somewhere else. But it does have these beautiful, like, ignore this finger, that's from the Sigma, but it has these beautiful, like traditional metallics. But I was, I was wanting like maybe one more that was like a deeper metallic, like a darker metallic. But outside of that, like that's my only that's my only critique of this. Everything in this palette is beautiful. The colors, the payoff is stunning. The blend is stu stunning. The mattes are beautiful. The flakies are beautiful. They're duochrome and gorgeous and high impact. And I got so many compliments when I wore this. And it's just definitely one of the, my favorite palettes that I've tried in a while, and probably one of the my favorite that's newer in my collection. And then finally, let's talk about the. Unearthly Cosmetics Spring Magic Palette. Now, this one is probably one of the ones that I've used the least that I've gotten recently because it is very colorful. And so, but what I've been reaching for with this palette and I've used quite a bit are these tones here. So I'll show you what I mean. So I've been using that one and that one and that one. And then I've really been reaching into these. And here, like here on camera, this looks quite pink. And then when I'm looking at it, it looks almost gold from the side. It's got that beautiful like, multi-chrome finish um today i am actually wearing this on my eyes i'm wearing full moon and clouds which is like this like shimmery like do it's like blue white duochrome shade um but the formulation on this i've tried on earthly before i love on earthly's formula their formula is stunning and there's more from them that i would love to try like i really want to try sorcerer's smoke i might add that to my wish list i think it is yeah i'm, I'm gonna add that somewhere because i every time i see it i'm like but I just haven't used a lot of the colors. I will say of the colors, I have used the greens. I've used Herbalist and Sprout. Um, and I've used a little bit of Thaw. And I've also used Dragonfly. So I've used, I've definitely used colors from these, but I'm just not, I'm not reaching for the color a ton right now. So I, as a result, I haven't gotten as much use as I have out of like the Cool Neutrals palette or my Cold Moon palette, which is got color in it, but it's like desaturated cool tone colors you know having said that the formula for this is stunning i really my two faves honestly because i'm boring is i love grimoire look at that oh i love that so much i do really love lush which is like this beautiful pink gold duochrome shade it's so stunning um also mystic let me get my finger in mystic here which is like this pink green duochrome. These are the things that I've been like of all the shades in here. And this one here is called Sunshine. And it's super light and soft. But it's like a gold peachy pink. Like these are the shades that I'm like, yes, please. Yes. I kind of want to do something with a grimoire tomorrow for work. Should I do it? I think I should. Yeah, I'm going to think I'm going to do something with like cleanse, clove, and grimoire tomorrow. And this, and I've done this look before. It's not great, <laughs> but I'm just like, I haven't done it in like, um, like a minute. So I'm like, mm, let's do that again. It's so pretty. Now I do have the blush palette that goes with that palette, the collection, the spring um, collection, the spring magic collection. I have not used that as much as I would have liked by now because I've been reaching for the same things over and over again. I need to step outside of my zone. Also that palette, I will admit guys, it scares me. It's so colorful. It's so pigmented. I've used a little bit of it and I use it kind of like as a topper for blush. And I think that's the way I'm going to approach it. So I don't want to give you my opinion on it yet because I've literally only used it maybe once and I used the orange as a topper. That's all I've done. So I don't feel like I've used it enough to give you a full review, but I do have the, the blush palette. And I do want to get more use out of it. I just need to sit down and play with it a little bit and see and get out of my like nervousness about it because it is incredibly pigmented. All right, guys. And finally for shadows, let's talk about the um, stained glass expansion of uh, uh, single shadows from Cleona. I got these in PR as well. Look how stunning these are. Oh my God. These I've been using quite a bit recently like I had these for a while and I hadn't reached for them that much I used them a few times in NOLA 
and um but i was i've been reaching for them more and i've really been reaching for very specific shades because i'm in my boring mode so yes these are the shades that i that i received and it's the entire nine shade expansion the shades that i'm really into are ascension and exothermic so these two here you're gonna notice i had space here so i threw some shadows in there but these two here are kind of like my happy place i haven't really used the deep tone here i've used all of the other ones but again it's one of those situations where if i'm going for a really simple look and i want to add a little bit of impact that doesn't require me to do a whole lot you know what i mean this is the perfect thing to reach for and so these are what these two look like and i'm just not doing them they're so stunning and it depends on what you layer them under or over and they're just and i also really like the shade alloy i think this one's really pretty too it's really kind of like a cool tone silver gray taupey tone and it shifts to like a gold these are stunning these are stunning this was my first experience with cleona i've always had like a, a lot of curiosity about Cleona but I was just like I would never like I'm like I don't know where to start so I'm just I just wouldn't and now I'm like really happy with these um they're stunning they're great and I'm not a single shadow girl and that's another reason why that kind of helped me back from ordering from them is that I'm not a single shadow girl I don't really reach for and when I say I'm not a single shadow girl I mean like the magnetize come in a mat you know like these types of single shadows I'm really good with things that are like in a pot or you know like in one of these something like that that's in like a component i tend to reach for more um but these have been sitting in on my makeup desk with my other palettes and i've actually been reaching for it quite a bit so i'm actually really proud of myself in that way because i've been like stepping out of my like my comfort zone and sort of i've just been reaching for these shades so i mean i mean look at this oh they're so stunning so yes, I'm very happy to have this and it's been it's been nice to have something that's like easy to pick up. These are very flaky. I will say when I use these, I do my eyes first, guys. I do my eyes first. They're very flaky. They're very high impact. Wet your brush or use glitter glue. You'll thank me later. That's all I'm going to say on that. All right, so those are all the eyeshadows and eyeshadow palettes that I've tried so far this year. And now let's talk about lips. Now, I've done two videos about lip products that I've tried over the past six months and I'm not going to go in depth about those what I've decided to do with this is to reach for products that I just got that I'm like trying out or and I haven't talked about yet or products that are new new formulas to me I didn't see the point in talking about things that I've already like talked about like you guys like the Gucci satins I've got a new color but the Gucci satins formula is the same Gucci satin formula it always is so I'm not going to reach for and talk about those if you want to see me talk more in depth about specific colors and things like that i highly recommend watching those two videos i did one in i think either february or march and then i just did one in april so those are two videos that i've done of um i think i did that in february so yeah february and april of lips my lipstick hauls that i've done recently because i love lipstick products and i've really been on a lipstick kick because even though my eyes have been staying kind of basic i've been really excited about trying new lipstick formulas so that little rant over let's get into lipsticks all right guys hands have been washed again so i can swatch lipsticks if need be so first off let's start with um let's start with the most expensive one here let's start with the westman atelier lip suede i have it in um the shade rue she looks like this i have talked about her a ton she is stunning she is beautiful i just put my nail in here i'm like being very very destructive right now and i'm not happy about that but she is beautiful i've worn her so much she is a really great matte formula like if you want something that's matte but doesn't feel like it's drying your lips out and it gives you that sort of like velvety texture i would say i don't love it as much as like the velvety texture of my lisa eldridge velvet you know lipsticks matte velvet lipsticks but if you're looking for something that gives you that kind of vibe and is comfortable isn't drying has high impact as far as pigment these are really nice and they also the shades are all like a little a little off center they're not like 
traditional shades like you have your traditional shades but there's something about them that just makes them a little interesting something about the undertones of them that makes them a little interesting um highly recommend this is very expensive these are fifty dollars each um i only have one i would like to try another which i probably will eventually um but yes i i do think the price point is high but i do think the product is good and then for a lip product that I, I don't think I talked about this at all, which is wild to me, and I think I just forgot about it. And not because it was bad or anything. I had put it up because I was swapping things out for um, videos and for my makeup capsule, which I'm going to be doing my summer makeup capsule soon. I just have to sort of go through and see what I want to put in it. Um, but I just completely forgot about this lip product, and it should have been in that video. And it is from Make Beauty, and it is... Um, I forget what they call these. Let me let me look up the name for you guys. So these are called the High Impact Cream Lipsticks, and I have mine in the shade Atmospheric. I will swatch it on my hand for you guys, and I really like this. I'm kind of bummed that I forgot to talk about it because I really, really like this formula, and I was using it exclusively for a while there, but I was, again, I was buying lots of lipsticks and trying different formulas, and this one kind of, I had it for a while, and then I got new things, and I kind of put it to the side, and I put it away wasn't in my in my makeup capsule anymore so kind of I just forgot to pull it out so this is atmospheric and this is such an interesting formula it's definitely that like it's high impact it is incredibly pigmented but it's also quite glossy but it is a lipstick it's not um it's not sheer it's not sticky glossy it is definitely that like lipstick lip gloss hybrid and as you can see it's high shine it's stunning i would wear this with like a slight i was wearing this with a slightly darker lip liner just slightly darker i'm in the same family just slightly darker to give my lips a bit more dimension and it it was beautiful this is um it's very sleek as you can see it's kind of hard to store with my other lipsticks because most of my lipsticks are like traditional like bullets so i've been put putting it with my like liquid lipsticks and I think that's another reason why I kind of got lost in the shuffle because it wasn't with the rest of my regular lipsticks but I've been enjoying this I was thinking if I wanted to get another shade I don't know um, a lot of the other shades are quite bright I think if I were to get another shade it would probably be um, catalyst or simulation which are like these brownie tones because of course and I really love the look of like a glossy brown but yeah, this is stunning. And I, again, I, I'm kicking myself for forgetting to add this to that video. But you're getting my review now. I think if you haven't had your eye on these, if you're looking for something that is quite pigmented, high impact, that's comfortable on the lips, that's glossy, that feels comfortable, that feels, you know, um, I wouldn't say it's like moisturizing, but it does have this feeling of like your lips don't feel, you know, they feel hydrated. And I, because it is very, it is very glossy, kind of creamy glossy, it's not necessarily going to last all day. You, if you're going to drink or eat, it's going to fade away. But the application is so easy. I found myself applying this very much like I would apply like a lip gloss where I would sit at my desk and I just go doo -doo 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 -doo, and I didn't even do it with a mirror, you know? So I've been really, really enjoying this. And I, I'm pu I pulled it out for this video and I'm like, oh, <gasps> And I'm going to put it, I think this is going to go into my summer makeup capsule um, because I've just, I've just been really, I've been really impressed by this formula. And of course, I've talked about the um, Nabla Beyond Jelly lipsticks. I talked about them in my last um, lipstick haul roundup and I love these. I, you know, like it, this is one of my favorite lip purchases of the year so far. This is Dia, which I've shown you guys so stunning. She's just beautiful and comfy and she is very she's similar in finish to the make beauty high impact cream lipstick but this one is maybe has more a little bit more gloss that jelly texture is there more it's a little bit more you know what i mean that 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 feeling of like when you have a gloss on then this one is this one is quite creamy and smooth and you can kind of rub your lips together and it's not going to feel a little bit this one can if you apply too much or if you are you know rubbing your lips together you might get more of that glossy vibe where your lips kind of like stick together a little bit more but it's not uncomfortable i then have the nabla lip creams um i did not include these in my video with the lipsticks because i was still trying these out and i hadn't really like figured out how I felt about them because the first time I tried it I wasn't sure if I liked it I got the first one sh the shade Rosewood came in um, PR and then I purchased the shade Dapper and I prefer Dapper it's what I'm wearing today and I'm gonna just reapply so you guys can see how this applies it has a really big doe foot applicator which I love 
And once I got dapper, I was like, oh, I think the issue is not the formula. The issue is the color. So color, um, Rosewood I got in PR. I didn't pick that shade out for myself. And I think the shade is pretty, but it's not really like a shade that I would reach for a ton. Whereas dapper has that like, as you can see, it has that kind of like muted mauve -y, cool tone vibe to it that is my jam and so i've been reaching for dapper a lot more and now i've gotten to know the formulation a lot more and it is very much like a creamy lipstick it's like a cream it's like a liquid cream lipstick like a, a liquid satin it's not thin it has some body to it it does stay on the lips like i've been drinking my drink it's faded a little bit on my on my straw but as you can see i still had lipstick on my lips um it's very comfortable the shade is really pretty. I, the other shades are a bit too traditional, like in my, for my taste, I like traditional pinks and things like that. So I don't know if I'd purchase more unless they came out with more shades that, that were more my aesthetic, but I really, really love Dapper and I think the formulation is really nice. And then we have um, the Merit Signature Matte Lipstick and I have it in the shade Equestrian, which looks like this. I will swatch for you guys. And I was wearing this a ton. And then again, I kept getting new lipsticks in. So I've been rotating. So this one I think I'm going to put in along with the, I have the Signature Lip Shine in 1990, which is also newer. And I did talk about, and I believe I talked about that in my last lipstick video. I, again, it's a formula that I've talked about on the channel before and reviewed for you guys. So I didn't feel the need to talk about it just because I got a different shade. But I think I'm going to put that as well as Equestrian in my capsule because I love the idea of having like these neutrally tones in different formulations. And Equestrian is so pretty. I will say of the two of these, as far as the matte formulas go, this one is more matte than the Merit. So if you're looking for a matte that's like matte, but like matte light, merit is, is the one for you if you're looking for like i want matte then you want this one <laughs> and i've um i also have the prada lipstick that i just remembered that i forgot to bring over but i do have the prada lipsticks which i've talked about in my video so i'm not going to go into detail with that either but that is the mattest of the matte of the matte so if you are looking for super matte matte hi they call it hyper matte for a reason it is hyper matte make sure you exfoliate make sure you are you know, moisturizing your lips ahead of time and after because I did find that formula to be incredibly drying. I love the color, but the formula for me, if I had to choose of the matte lipsticks that have come out recently, I would choose these two before I would choose the Prada. And then finally, to finish this video, which is very long, I have the <laughs> mascaras that I've tried in the year so far. And I've only tried two new ones. And one is the e.l.f. Lash Extender. Tubi mascara, which I showed in my empties on Instagram, and then I promptly tossed, which I forgot that I was doing this video, and I, I love that formulation. It's the first Tubi mascara that I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed, and I do plan on repurchasing. I also want to get it in the brown, which they just released. And then also, let's talk about the City Beauty Beyond Mascara, because that's what I was wearing, I'm wearing today, and that's what I've been wearing exclusively since I finished the lash, the e.l.f. lash extender. My feelings are this, are complicated i like the mascara a lot i liked it from the moment i opened it i like it when i put it on but my issue with this is that it takes forever to dry it is a very 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 wet formula and i'm always battling transfer when i put this on and i often find myself battling transfer when it should have dried what i feel like it's been long enough for a tip dried so that is my one gripe with this i think it's a beautiful mascara i think it is does all the things that it says it's going to do it's volumizing it's lengthening but it is incredibly wet and it is incredibly takes incredibly long time to dry. All right guys, so whew, that was a really long video. I've been here for like an hour, maybe longer, and yeah, that was a lot. Um, these six month roundups are nice. They're just really hard to do because you have to think of every single product that you've tried. I'm sure I've forgotten something. I forgot to bring the Prada lipstick over here, but I did talk about it. Um, I'll just probably like insert a picture of it or something. Um, but I've tried a lot of makeup and when you do beauty content, you try a lot of makeup and I can see why people do monthly favorites. I don't, I try to, if I do a monthly favorite, it's because I really truly have something to talk about this besides makeup. I tend to like to do like monthly favorites that are quite more rounded. Uh, you know, I'll talk about books and I'll talk about other beauty products and I'll talk about perfume or TV shows and movies. And I enjoy doing that. Um, 
the month of April was a rough month for me just in general like overall I was on the struggle bus or the month of May rather um and really it started at the beginning like middle of April went into the end of May let's just be real but as a result I didn't have a lot of favorites of things because I was like not reading as much as I normally read I wasn't doing a lot of the things that I normally would do that I could you know give you information about and be like oh yeah I like this oh yeah I like that and so for me the month of June which is also my birthday month is really just sort of like the month where I want to like get back to like doing the things that I enjoy and the things that bring me joy and um not being on the struggle bus as much <laughs> with that um but yeah so this is everything that I've tried in six months and I don't know if I'll do another one of these sooner you know I don't I think it would be good towards the end of the year since I've done one six month I can do the end of the year one but I I can I get why people do these monthly because it can get really overwhelming when you wait when you wait too long but I hope this video was informative. It was very long. If you're still here, if you're still here, leave an emoji in the comments. Leave a, a flower emoji. Yeah, leave a flower emoji in the comments down below if you are still watching. And if you are still watching, thank you so much. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit the like button. Everything that I've talked about, most of it, if it will fit, will be in the description box down below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit the like button and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye now.